Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Ultima 8, and when last we left off, the Avatar finally has some better equipment. We have a saber, we also have a shield, and we have a really impressive helmet. We have 8 points of armour. We could get a lot more, but that would involve us spending some money, or finding some things that we could take with the Avatar tax. We could buy things, we have 78 obsidian coins. We also have a clock, which means that we can always tell that it is currently three moons. I've no idea what time that is, because we can't tell by how dark it is, because it's always perpetual twilight here, in Pagan. Perhaps that's something to do with the Titans, or perhaps that's because they didn't want to code a night and day system. Either way, we're going to head into the other half of Tenebrae now, after talking to you. Hello you! Greetings. What is your name? Who are you? Has Mordia sent you to question me? Oh, I accidentally uh, clicked away there. Let's try again. What is your name? Who are you? Has Mordia sent you to question me? Ha! If you do not know who I am, then you do not know what I have done. Well, you've just admitted that you've done something. Uh, no, no, I didn't. You did. I, I've done nothing. Fair enough, I'm just going to leave now. Time to go to this part of Tenebrae. There are a lot more buildings here that we can go and have a look at. There's one right here, for instance. Time to go in and see what we can find. The answer is likely not that much, but we may be able to find something. It's quite a nice place here. Lots of things to look at, lots of things we could take, but we're not going to take. Down here is another location. There is a, a treasure chest there, and it looks like we could get in there, but I don't know how. So for now, we're just going to take this, these four obsidian coins. Now we have even more money. Excellent. There's a switch there. Can we press that from this side? The answer is no. No, we can't. Maybe if we get really close, we can do that? No, the game won't let us do it through the wall. That makes sense. And so, up we go. Maybe we can find a way in there from this side. It's not likely, but we can have a look. Over here, looks like some kind of training hall. I don't think it's going to be occupied at this time, as I think three moons is rather late in the day. At least it seems to be if the blacksmith isn't working. And so, we will leave, and go and have a look at somewhere else. Like over here, for instance. There is some water. Don't jump in there, Avatar, or you'll drown immediately. And here is somebody. I believe you are a beggar. Let's talk to you, shall we? Greetings. Do you have any old coins you don't want? Sure, we'll give you one obsidian coin. After all, we don't need it, and you might. Here you go. Thank you kindly, stranger. May Hydros find favour with you. If we didn't give any money away, he would uh, get really angry at us. Understandable, considering we, uh, I think we insult him if we don't give him any money. This door is locked. We could come back here later, though. There's also this area here. We can't get in there just yet, at least from this side. There's here that we could go into. Soon, I shall be able to call Britannia mine. It seems, Avatar, that you are missed here. Why, I believe I hear Lord British crying out for you now. I don't think Lord British would be that urgently asking for me. After all, there are a lot of people in Britannia that could defend Britannia. That said, they're not the Avatar, so maybe we need to get there a little bit quicker. That is, if you're telling the truth. This is Salkin's residence. We want to go in here and be very careful, because if uh, Salkind is here and he sees us taking things, we might be in some bother. First, let's have a look in here. If Salkind is asleep, he's really not going to appreciate us barging into here. Hello? You are not here. That is quite a relief. Anything in here? No, nothing in here. There's a clock, but we're not going to be taking that. Let's have a look over here. What does this say? It says, we need to be a little bit closer, that's what it says. Do not enter. Can we even enter it? No, because it's locked, so we don't really have that option. What about over here? There are some rooms that we could go into. If that is, we can open them. We can open this one, and in here doesn't seem to be much. 
There's some meat here, and there is some cheese, and there's also this barrel that contains a jug and more meat. We don't want any of that. We're going to go this way instead. Maybe there's something awesome here that we can get. It looks like there's nothing awesome here at all. Or maybe there is. What's that? Let's just go over here. It just looks like a piece of that pillar. Yes, it's a piece of that pillar. So we're just going to go over here and see what we can find. Anything here? Well, you have a picture of a skull. We can't take that, or maybe we can take that. We're not going to take that. There is this here, a journal. The official logbook of crimes and punishments. As recorded by Salkind, the Shenishel of Tenebrae during the reign of her ladyship Mordia. The following is a list of the crimes of known enemies of the state, and of the swift and just punishments as decreed by her ladyship. Armin. Guilty of inciting and spreading rebellious ideologies counter to the views of the state, inventing and proclaiming malicious slander against her ladyship, provoking treasonous acts in public and assaulting the captain of the guard, highway robbery and treachery, punishment, death by beheading. Hermes, writing many treasonous and slanderous articles against the government, partaking in the forging of royal documents, arousing riots and melees and other civil disturbances, resisting formal arrest and other violent treacherous acts. Random. Guilty of participating in public disturbances aimed at undermining the state. Destruction of public property. Making threats against prominent members of the community. Plotting the assassination of her ladyship. Vacaneering and other vile acts of treachery. Punishment. A hundred lashes, then death by beheading. Debea. Guilty of exciting the public to hysteria with controversial rhetoric banned by the state. Calling unlawful gatherings and assemblies. Inviting the youth of Tenebrae to pillage and plunder their own town, damage to state property through the use of arson, committing statutory rape, public intoxication, striking a guardsman with a wooden club, wounding him, pillaging the poor, and an assortment of other treacherous acts. Punishment. Death by beheading. Also find 250 coins. Zog. Guilty of following the rhetoric exposed by De Bea. Sale of weapons without a permit from the state. Passing counterfeit coins, defrauding widows of their inheritance, public intoxication, poaching on the grounds of the palace, brigand age, the many other acts treacherous in nature, punishment, fined, flogged, then death by beheading. Tauren, guilty of inciting and spreading ideologies contrary to the state, participating in public disturbances aimed at undermining the government, swindling the public through the sales of fake gems, privateering, purloining, pilfering, pickpocketing, and an assortment of other acts of treachery, too many to mention here. Punishment. Death by beheading. That is an extensive list. Let's move on and have a look at any of the other books that we can see here. Like this one in particular. Let's read this one. Killer Jokes by Trickster. Welcome reader and learn the age-old art of practical jokes. I, Trickster, have studied long and hard from the tomes of the ancient masters to achieve the knowledge and wisdom that I may now impart on you, the novice. Chapter 1. Exploding Books. Ha <laughs> ha. And the book exploded. And we took a little bit of damage. We now have only 32 health. That person prepared explosive runes this morning. It was very effective. Here is a journal. Expedition Journal Book 2. Day 17. It's been about four days since Salem received the fatal blow, and some strange events have happened. Three children entered the camp before midnight, claiming to be childhood friends of his. When she saw them, Lane let out a fearsome scream and collapsed, and the little strangers made a hasty retreat into the night. How could children be childhood friends of a man in his late thirties? Day 18. This morning around breakfast, Lane explained that the childhood companions were only illusions that Salem used to create to entertain himself, and if the illusions still existed, then Salem must still be alive. We will seek advice when we return to Tenebrae. Day 19. After a rugged day of travel yesterday, we all expected a much-needed and well-deserved rest in Tenebrae, but it was not to be. As soon as the door to our leased cabin was opened, those three children were lurking about inside. Still, they pleaded for us to rescue Salem, and we had decided to let them stay with us and investigate their claims in the morning. The fact that they knew our destination before we did unnerves me to no end. There was no sleep to be had with the mournful gaze of the oldest child, who calls himself Colin watching me all night. Day 20. 
Today, we went on a wild chase with the Fire Brigade as they attempted to douse several fires that started simultaneously around Tenebrae, when a shower of flaming stones rained from the sky. Lane's skirts caught fire, and she raised quite a stir when she leapt into the Tempest Fountain to douse them, and discovered it was stocked with snapping eels. Day 21. We have spent the day on the road following the directions of Colin. He has offered no information about Salem's condition other than he needs help. After what I saw happen to him, there is no way he could be alive. What kind of help does a dead person need? I guess we will find out tomorrow. Day 22. The black shadow of the keep still falls over us as the sun rises on the other side. The silence and cold here is not natural, and Warwick is convinced we are being watched from the twisted spires. I'm going to carry my speaking stone into the place, and it will recognize Salem without error. And then the journal ends. Perhaps we will meet Salem at some point, or maybe we won't. Either way, we'll just have one quick look around here before we move on. Is there a switch or anything that we can uh, activate here? There may be. Is there anything in here? There is this book, which is Enemies of Tenebrae. Enemies of Tenebrae compiled by the Royal Sessional, His Eminence Salkind. The following is a list of those citizens and former citizens of Tenebrae who are suspected to be involved in dealings or activities that may be construed to be dangerous or otherwise damaging to the city-state of Tenebrae. Armina, Darian, Devon, Kilandra, Corric, Orlok, Rian, Gwilliam, Corinth, Torwin, Cyrus. These people are to be considered dangerous and will be constantly watched for suspicious activities. That is a long list. Let's go, shall we? We haven't found anything of particular note here. Maybe we'll be back here later, but either way, for now, and we'll leave. We need to go and look for other places, like the library for instance. We also need to find out what this building is all about. Let's just uh, follow this fence. We can't follow the fence because the fence goes to that wall. Never mind. This way we go instead. We'll eventually find out what that building's all about. To do that though, we have to go this way and all the way around. We may find somebody else that we can talk to as well. What is in here? Well, there's some water that's dripping on the uh, ground there. Fair enough. Is this currently open? It is currently open. Let's go in and see who we can find. It looks like we can find absolutely nobody here. We may find something in there. No, we found nothing. What about up here? Anything here? There's just some clothes there, nothing of any particular importance. Is there anything under this cushion? The answer is no. There's a, a treasure chest here though. Is it currently locked? It is not, and in here are some flasks of oil. We don't need those right now, so we'll just leave them there. And I don't think there's anything here. We could just uh, go over to here and have a look at the surroundings, but we won't get a good view. So instead, we'll just leave. We need to find the library, and I don't think anybody is really going to help us with that. I mean, we could ask one of the guards, but the guards are unlikely to be that uh, helpful in uh, guiding us around. We could, but you seem very busy. The weapons indeed do get heavy. Let's just go this way instead, and head over in, uh, ooh, there is a sign here. Temple of the Divine Hydros. And there is a, uh, child here. Let's talk to you. Greetings. What is your name? I am Kokoskia. Yeah? Where do you come from? Well, that's a good question. We could say, from another town, or from another world. Let's just say from another town. Yeah? What did you do there? Well, we fought monsters, we helped people, or we baked bread. I think that's a reference to Ultima 7. I helped people. Yeah? Why are you so tall? A troll stretched me, or I was born this way. Both of these are wrong, Avatar. You were not born that tall. But we'll just say that one. Yeah? How did you get here? Well, he walked, he came by boat, or a big red hand dropped me. I walked here. Yeah? Do you always wear that silly costume? Yes, I do. Or what silly costume? Let's do a uh, what silly costume. 
Yeah. Why are Torex is big and brown? Why are they not blue and red? Because then they would be kith. Yeah? Yeah. You could say some very silly things in that conversation. There's no real consequence to uh, answering truthfully or not, and here is a fan. We are not going to be taking that fan. We're just going to be heading this way instead. There are places that we need to go and explore. Like not there, because we've already had a look in there. There are places over here, though. If we just follow this road, eventually it will lead to new places. Like over here, for instance. We may even find the library. We found this building, maybe this building is important for some reason. Let's go and find the entrance. Is it over here? It looks like it's over here. What is in here? We can't tell, because it's currently locked. So we're going to, uh, go somewhere else instead. Like maybe over in this direction. And there is another pool. And there is a gem. It's a shame we can't reach that gem. It would be nice to have. We could maybe sell it. There's nothing on the other side of this pool. Alright, over here we go then instead. Run, Avatar, run! You must find that library as quickly as possible. And there is another guard. I was just curious as to uh, who that was. Anything over here? There may be. Looks like there's a building. Can we find our way into this building? Ah, here is an entrance. This is a... Ah, the Tenebrae Library! We have found the library! Marvelous, we really need to be in here. Unfortunately, it is open. And who are you? You are peasant? And there is somebody here that is very important. For us, at least right now. We need to talk to you about a lot of things, man. But for now, we're going to read this book that we've been holding on to. Morian's Necromancer, Prophet, and Hero. Let none doubt that no greater hero did ever walk the lands of Pagan than the immortal Morians. Morians did earn the title of Immortal as he still walks at the right hand of the Mountain King. Dead in body but not in spirit, Morian's legacy of greatness and heroism will live on into eternity. Many young children who have not yet learned of Morian's true wonderment do often look with innocent, upturned eyes and ask with voices filled with awe of the great man of which they've heard their playmates speak. Then do the parents sit down with their children and tell them the story of the greatest of all magic users, the first necromancer. Morian's greatness became obvious when he was still but a young boy. At the age of seven, he slew a troll that did threaten his father. Although the troll was terrible and large and armed with a deadly club, Morian stood unafraid. The blessed child Morian stood with a sharp stone in hand and hurled the stone with a very great force. The stone struck Patrol in the eye and landed with such force that Patrol did fall dead, and Morian's father was saved. The great feats of Morian's did not end with his victory over the troll. When Morian's was just beginning to grow into manhood, a strange man did come into his village. The stranger did speak well, and claimed to be a prophet. Many people did come to hear this man speak, for he did offer salvation to those who would follow him. But Morian's, in his great wisdom, did see the man for a charlatan, and rebuked him. When the others heard Morian's, they too saw that the man was a false prophet, and did stone him to death. Such was the greatness of Morian's, but the greatest story of Morian's greatness, so great that there are two greats in that sentence, is the story of the pact which Morian's made with the Mountain King. Great is the power of the Earth Titan, and terribly did he shake the ground. For unbeknownst to mortal men, the Mountain King did have a great hunger for human flesh. Therefore, Lithos would tear open the land, and in would spill his victims. Morian knew of Lithos' longing, for Morian's was wiser than any other. Without fear, Morian's did tread beneath the ground to find the Mountain King. In the City of the Dead, Morian's did confront the great and mighty Mountain King. Lithos shook the ground, yet still was Morian's unafraid. When Lithos asked why Morian's should come before a Titan, Morian's told Lithos that he knew of the Titan's hunger. Therefore did Morian's offer a bargain with the Mountain King. Should Lithos spare the people above the ground and let them live to old age, Morian's himself would ensure that upon death, all of the remains would be offered unto Lithos. 
If this bargain should be kept, promised Morians, the almighty titan would have his fill, and the people above the ground could then live unafraid. Lithos, being most impressed with this fearless mortal which stood before him, did agree that such a bargain would be a good thing. Then did Morians promise that he personally would inter all of the dead, giving over their bodies to Lithos. So impressed by Morian's courage and self-sacrifice was Lithos, that he did give his necromancer his greatest prize, the Heart of the Earth. This treasure, which is the largest diamond-shaped object in the world, is made of a pure and lovely black rock. It sounds like it's made of black rock to me. Doesn't it to you? So rare is this black rock that there are only five pieces of it in the entire world. And so proud was Morians of his treasure, that he did vow to never give it up, but to carry the heart of the earth into the city of the dead, and hold it for eternity. Countless are the stories of Morian's greatness and power, truly too many for this tome to contain, but to tell any more of Morian's glory would be immodest and unworthy of such a noble man. This then ends the incomplete life story of Morian's, necromancer, prophet, hero. So written by my hand in the great tomb, completed at the time of Bloodwatch, Morian's Necromancer. We're going to uh, put this over here. We don't need to read this anymore. Such a good book. Are you referring to the book that I just read, or the one that you're reading? But when we come back, folks, we're going to go and talk to this person. We have a fair few things that we need to talk about. Maybe we'll be able to get a pointer as to where we need to go to escape Pagan. You will have to read more on this. Is that the plot of the game that you're reading? If so, you'll definitely be able to help me. And the Avatar! And so, I wonder if Devon knows this. Hmm. Curious. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks. And I'll see you then. Later.